Hi guys and ladies. You know, it's a cold, breezy, gloomy fall day here. Fishing isn't the first recreational activity to come to mind, but these are just the days when fishing is best and I'm hungry. So let's see if we can go from the water to the frying pan. So here's what I'm going to use. It's a tiny lead jig head with a mealworm on it. So if you can't get mealworms, don't worry. You can use red worms or any live bait that fits on the hook. So I'm going to fish over to the right side of this lake where it's sheltered from the wind. And it's also full of downed trees and branches. And last, it's deeper there than the other shorelines. So when the water's cold, that's where the fish go. Nice crappie. Mm. Wow. Crappies grow big here. Like the bluegill. That's over 11 inches. Okay, I know this is heresy, but um, I don't like the taste of crappie. Um, I have to get them out of the lake because it's good for the ecology of the lake. Uh, so I threw it into the woods. I believe that the raccoons will appreciate that more than I will. Yeah, there's one. Anytime they're over eight inches like this is, is a good fish, good for eating. You don't have to cast very far. Just stay close to structure, underwater cover, like that. <laughs> Another good eating fish. Got him. Oh, they're running small today. This guy's just gonna make the cut. I'm hungry. They're running small today. You should have been here yesterday. This is the last cast. Then we're going in and putting the fish in the frying pan. I've got uh, six uh, medium-sized bluegill here, which is 12 fillets. And each fillet should weigh at least an ounce, so that means I have uh, 12 ounces to go into the frying pan. So there they are, my six medium-sized bluegill. Wow, 15 ounces. Wow, I got 15 ounces. That's more than I expected. So now I've got my fish fillet. There are plenty of excellent videos on filleting fish. You don't need to see me doing every bit of it. But now I'm going to soak these in evaporated milk. 
and that seems to impart an even sweeter flavor to an already great fish. Here I'm going to start the breading with about five or six ounces of flour. Now you can use corn flour or all-purpose flour, but I'm using coconut flour because it's really low in carbohydrates. So I'm going to make a spice blend and I'm starting with three quarters teaspoon of salt. So let's add to that a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now I'm putting in a teaspoon of onion powder. Here goes one of my favorite spices, a teaspoon of cumin. Now it's time for a teaspoon of chipotle chili powder. Let's blend them all together. Into this large skillet, I'm putting one half cup of peanut oil. You can use any kind of oil. So the oil will give it some crispiness. Now I'm adding one whole stick of butter for flavor. I'm going to set this skillet to medium high, 375. So the fish has been soaking in this evaporated milk. Let's strain it. You no doubt saw me do this before. It's the best way of applying the breading to the fish. Now I'm going to put these babies in the hot oil and butter. Two and a half minutes on one side and one and a half minutes on the other, or approximately. Bill Gowdy, you could do this outdoors. To do this right, you should have controlling interest in a paper towel company. Mm. Boy, they look good. You know, my dear friend of 49 years, Miss Lulu Cheeks, the famous food critic, restaurant reviewer, well, she couldn't be here tonight, but that's okay. You see, I need to perfect the one recipe that will finally win her heart. So let me check this out. Mmm. Mm. Oh my. I think this is it. This is so delicious. If she tries this, she'll be mine. Yummo. I've got to eat this now. Thanks for watching. Excuse me. <clears throat> Hi guys and ladies, it's a cold, breezy, gloomy fall day here, so try to stay close to cover. Oh, I said that wrong. Cold out here.